Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here and welcome to the last video of 2023. I feel like I've read all the books that I'm going to be reading this year, this month. There's one book that I might still read. I'm going to get into it a little bit later, but I thought it's cold. I have nothing to do. What better thing to do than film a wrap up for the month of December? So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. We're going to be talking about the eight books that I've read in December so far. We've had some really good reads this, this month. I've had some of... I actually had basically all five star reads so the first book that i finished this month was stranded for the holidays by kylie kaylee monroe something like that i don't remember yeah so it's a book of with three short stories all of them about a couple of people that gets stranded for the holidays by snowstorms so the first one was brother's best friend the other one was boss and then the other one was best friends i gave that book like three stars i think it was it was fun it was all right it wasn't the best yeah i gave it three stars it's it was fine honestly there's not much to it it was a cute little christmas read it wasn't like christmasy i don't think but it was fine it was cute and fun and funny and romantic whatever the next book I read this month was Conversations with Friends. I talked about this book in my favorites of 2023 video, so it was obviously one of my favorite books of the year. It's uh, obviously got five stars. In this book, we're following our main character, Frances, as she navigates her life as a 21-year-old college student in Dublin. She develops this affair with a married man called Nick. This book really explores a few different themes um very well so friendship relationships in general uh power dynamics and power dynamics within relationships both platonic and romantic relationships i thought it was really interesting the way that was talked about and explored here honestly this would have been a great read for the summer because it takes time it takes place mostly in the summer and i just i like this book was so good i annotated it a little bit I found Sally Rooney's writing style in this book to be quite different from the way she wrote in Beautiful World, Where Are You, and Normal People. In this one, it's a little more concise. It's to the point. This is what I've been saying about quite a few books, uh, but it's very concise. And I also mentioned this in my favorites video, I believe, but I think it was made that way in direct correlation to our main character being a poet. This is narrated in first person. The fact that it is narrated in first person, it's like we're inside our main character Francis's head and she's a poet. She has, she uses verses to express herself, right? Verses tend to be short. So she uses short sentences and I don't know. I think it was, it made it really easy to follow. This is also Sally Rooney's debut novel and i 100 percent recommend there's a few topics in here that are discussed that might be a little more sensitive but i think it was done perfectly the next book i'm going to be talking about was also in my 2023 favorites video and that is my year of rest and relaxation by motessa oshbeck this book is definitely a mood read you have to be in the zone to read this kind of thing what zone is that it's literary fiction conversations with friends put me in a literary fiction mood and so i picked this up i loved it i read this in like two or three days i think it was three days i annotated it very very lightly just every now and then with like my thoughts and everything and Again, there are themes that prevail in this book that I thought were explored very well. One of them is addiction. And honestly, when I was reading, I wasn't even thinking about that. It's something that I've come upon um, while reflecting on this book. But addiction was very well portrayed here, in my opinion. Our main character, we never do get to know her name, but she's our main character. She's our narrator and she basically decides to take a year to rest and do nothing basically just sleep her parents died not that long ago they died six weeks apart her dad had cancer her mom killed herself she's in a depression basically she never truly acknowledges it i don't think but it's very clear that she's in the depression nobody in their right state of mind would want to just sleep for a whole year 
And because she decides she wants to do this, she gets a psychiatrist. Not a very good psychiatrist, just one that will give her whatever pills she wants. And she lies to the psychiatrist so that she can get more pills and stronger ones. And at a certain point, her pills stop working. She can't sleep. And she decides to take a really strong pill that makes her do things while she's sleeping. Basically, sleepwalking. And more towards the end, she decides to take these pills every three days for, I think it was four months. So that's what she does. And then she just stops taking the pills and basically kind of goes back to her life. I think it was... Honestly, this book... The way it's written, you're inside a character's uh, mind. It's a um, pretty unreliable narrator, honestly. She's not a very good person. She's not a good friend. She doesn't have many friends. And the one that she does have is not a very good person either. And in my, I, I believe that the way this is narrated, it's exactly what it feels like to be in a depressive state. And I would think so what it is like to have an addiction to something. This was also a five star read for me. The next book I'm gonna be talking about is Daisy Jones and the Six. This book, this book, this book. I'm currently watching the show. There are no words, there are no words. This is obviously, obviously going to become one of my favorite books of the year. The first book I read by Taylor Jenkins Reid also was on my favorites of 2023 list it was the seven husbands of evelyn hugo i did actually then also buy carrie soto is back so that's on my tbr for probably january i have nothing bad to say about this book i thought that the concept was so interesting so so interesting i thought it was so well executed the whole dialogue between the characters but it's not really a dialogue you're getting multiple points of view in every single page to one story that was such a big thing and it just felt so real which is one like it's something that i also had to say about the seven husbands of evelyn hugo it felt so real it felt like you were there with them and you wanted to be there with them even though there's no them they don't exist this world these people they don't exist but they felt like they did so this is written in an interview style and the concept of this book is there's this person that is interviewing the members of a band that split in 72 i want to say i actually think it was the late 70s and we later find out who this person that is interviewing them is which I was very, very surprised about that. So they interview the members of Daisy Jones and the Six. We're following them as they become famous, the band The Six become famous, as Daisy become fa becomes famous, and as they get together and become one of the biggest bands in the world. And then they split. One day they just split, and nobody knows why they split, and that's what they're gonna be telling us. They're going to be telling us how, like what happened, how it happened, and how they felt about all of that and i love this book i have a lot of people i've heard a lot of people talk about this book a lot of them don't like reading it i personally did i didn't find it confusing go read this please like i read this in what two three days as well it was it was great it was really 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 great so i will forever love this book the next four books that i read i actually read all of these in one day and you're going to understand why and we're also going to be talking about my other possible read so the next four books i read this month were the first four books in the heartstopper series by alice oseman i originally read these in 2020 or 2021 but the fifth one is coming out well came out this year and i didn't pre-order it because i was like whatever it's fine i'll just go buy it the day it comes out it wasn't in stock in stores yet and i ordered it on the 12th it's the 27th so i ordered it 15 days ago and i have no idea when that's gonna get here um apparently it shipped out this morning i can track it and i don't know where it is so i don't know if that's gonna arrive at all i don't know if it's gonna arrive this year next year i don't know so for now we're just gonna be talking about these four and yeah i read these ahead of the release of the fifth one because i wanted to know i didn't really remember everything that happened and i wanted to so let's get started so these 
books. We're following our two main characters, Nick and Charlie. So Charlie is 14 when this starts and um, Nick is 15. I'm pretty sure that's those were their ages and they are in the same form in school so this happens in the uk um so they're in the same form as in school and they end up sharing a desk and that's how they meet they then become friends and obviously from friends they go to more the main topic in this book is sexuality that is the main topic of this book we find out that one of our characters is gay the other one's bisexual he finds out that about himself and they then start dating there's not a whole lot i want to be telling i don't want to be spoiling much this whole series deals with some heavy topics so i would definitely recommend uh checking any trigger warnings or themes of the book before you read them if you think you might be easily triggered these are graphic novels i don't know if i mentioned that so that's what that looks like it's so much fun i'm pretty sure alice herself uh, draws everything and they have like this little extras at the end with like the characters and information about the characters and it's really fun there are a couple of then short books that you can read as you read these they're Nick and Torley and This Winter I didn't read them as I was rereading these I read them earlier in the year but they would definitely supplement this really really well and you now also have the fifth book to read and then the sixth book will hopefully be coming out in 2024 but i have no idea so those are the eight books that i read this month honestly i think it was a very very productive reading month i'm very happy with all that i read as i said i'm not really sure i'm gonna finish reading any more books i'm reading eileen by otessa moshfeg right now i'm not gonna i don't think i'm gonna finish that this uh this month because i am pretty busy with things i have like new year's prep to do and i'm going on a trip for new year's which is going to be a whole thing and yeah i don't know so i'm not going to be stressing myself out i had a really good reading year this this year i read so far 61 books which i'm extremely happy with my goal was 50. with all that being said we've reached the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because i have a lot of exciting things coming up next year and i would love it if you could stick around for that also turn on your post notifications so you're always notified whenever i upload a new video which is every single tuesday in the morning unless something happens to me i hope you guys have a great new year's i hope this year was good to you and i know that 2024 is going to be good for all of us and i will see you guys on tuesday so bye